We got Matt Schnell back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Nakoni Inoue coming up here at UFC Fight Night 132 in Singapore on June 23rd. Matt, what's going on, man? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me, James. Good to be back. Yeah, it's good to talk to you again. And, of course, uh, big news with you uh, since you and I last talked was that you got married. Uh, how's uh, married life treating you these days? <clears throat> married life's been great. Me and my wife, we live in Houston, Texas, and we got married April 14th. And we've been together for six years now, so... It was, it was the right move, good transition. We're very happy, and, uh, yeah, everything's been good, except for the fact that as soon as I got married, I went on my honeymoon and then right afterwards left for a training camp. So things move quick, though, you know. Yes, they do. So did you get the fight offer, I guess, while you were on the honeymoon, so you had to cut it short? No, no. We got our full honeymoon. We knew about oh, the good. fight. Months oh, good, months. okay. They let, they let me know about it. A, a long time ago, while, a while before they actually announced it, I knew about the fight. Uh, they actually wanted me to originally approach me about fighting on April 14th, which is the day I got married. So, Which is a tough sell, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. I was like, you know, uh, just let me go to Vegas for the day. I'll be back, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll do the wedding the next day. But that's not how it works, come to find out. So, uh, yeah. But it's so about about right at that time, they were like, all right, well, we're just going to have to do it June 23rd. And that was, you know, that was what we did. Uh, where'd you go on your, honey on your honeymoon? We went on a cruise, uh, Royal Caribbean, Liberty of the Seas. We went to uh, and came in uh, Jamaica, Cozumel, seven day cruise. It was really nice. It was beautiful. It was just private time with my wife. And it's good to good to get in that travel time. And uh, you're going to be traveling uh, for the first time in your career overseas, first fight overseas. Uh, how excited were you to get some more uh, frequent flyer miles? Yeah, I mean, flying's always been a part of my life. My dad is an airline pilot, so I've always kind of liked to think that jet lag doesn't affect me and, and uh, my sequoiaing rhythm is different than others. I can make adjustments. But, uh, yeah, we're, I'm excited. I've been to Thailand before and, and made a, a long trip uh, out that way. We're just going a little bit further. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I got into this sport not to make money, but to have experiences. And what better experiences than to see the world? I agree. And when are you arriving? When are, When's your flight going to be? <clears throat> so we leave uh, Sunday night, and I'll get in on Tuesday morning. We're like 15 hours ahead. so Or they're 15 hours ahead. So, uh, yeah, it's just like a normal fight week. You know, I'm going to feel like I lose a day in there because I kind of do. But uh, so I, I'm like trying to get myself ready to you, we're going to hit the hit the ground and it's going to be go time, you know. So I, I've got to kind of get myself uh, in that mindset that it's fight week. As soon as we hit the ground, it's not Sunday or Monday like it's going to feel like it's Tuesday morning. It's time to go. So we're just trying to put the things in place to make the adjustments necessary. And uh, who's going to be in your corner? Because I know uh, with international fights, I think the UFC only pays for one, and then you have to pay for the other one. Are you, are you taking? Are you going to pay for the other cornerman, or you only have one cornerman? I will have uh, Darren Wayonyama is coming with me. He's the he's the cornerman that uh, the UFC is paying for, and then my buddy Adam Antolin, who was on the Ultimate. Fight I interviewed before. him before his last fight for Bellator. Great guy. Yeah, yeah, he's the man. He'll be out there with me as well. And then I've got uh, my buddy that I've been staying with. Kind of, uh, he's. he's helps me with my diet and stuff too he'll be out there as well so uh, I'll, I'll still have a little bit of a crew that's great and of course uh, we got to talk about your last fight first UFC victory you get the win over a Marco Antonio Beltran at UFC 216 you must have been pretty happy with your performance especially notching that first UFC victory yeah it's big uh, it's big to get out there and get the W I, I felt like maybe I had like a little bit of a mental block I expected too much of myself put too much pressure on myself early in uh, my UFC tenure, so it was nice to go out there and get over the hump and get the win. But you know, I'm not, I'm just one of these guys. I'm never quite satisfied, you know. And uh, it was it was good to get the win. Marco was a tough guy. I trained with him. A lot of people speak highly of him. He was three and zero at one point in uh, the weight class above me. So th this kid's talented. He was a big 25er, and he was uh, he, he was a he was a test. And you know, it was nice to come out on the winning end of it. And, and I think the main thing, too, uh, you know, I'm sure it's a weight lifted off your shoulders because we know what you're capable of. I mean, we saw it on the regional scene. We saw it on, you know, in, in many fights. And I, you just had tough matchups. I mean, you had to go up and fight Rob Fun. I mean, look at Rob now. He's fighting Rafael Sunsau. Like, it, it, you're not taking easy fights. Does that kind of uh, give a bit of validation getting a win like that? Uh, no. You know, I <clears throat> honestly, I, 
uh, all the respect in the world to anybody I compete against, but I think that I can beat all these guys. And Rob Font, of course, he's he's incredible, and he's one of the biggest man men I've ever you know stood in a cage with for sure. He's got to be the biggest guy I've ever fought. Uh, but that that fight was uh, within hand, and it just got away from me. Lost concentration, lost the fight. Uh, the better man won that night, and the same thing in, in the second fight. These aren't fights that I'm, I'm losing. You know, these are fights that I'm competitive in, and uh, I get ahead of myself. I'm I'm trying to uh, learn how to deal with that stuff. I believe I'm always uh, kind of fighting the the demons within me, and I'm kind of a gritty guy, and I like to bite down and, and swing away, and I've got a build and uh you know tools that that i can fight differently and i need to you know move towards that to preserve myself for my family for my career and uh, win fights in the ufc i mentioned tough opponents you got another one here in an undefeated uh, in a way he's got 11 or no record how do you feel like you match up against him i like the matchup you know we is he 11 and 0 i didn't know that yeah i'm just kidding of course i know oh. that <laughs> Well, some fighters don't. You believe it or not, they're like, oh, I didn't know they had that many fights. Because uh, some fighters will just like let their coaches uh, sort of dictate their their training camp. And uh, but you're a guy. I know you're a student, so I, I wouldn't be surprised by that. Yeah, I looked into the guy for sure, and he's talented and he's good. And yeah, he's 11 and 0, and he's never lost a fight. Uh, yeah, I like the matchup. I I think I, I don't uh, I don't fear like an undefeated guy because sometimes to me it just doesn't seem like. Uh, it, especially being a Japanese guy coming up in the regional scene, I promise he had some favorable matchups. And we all have. Don't get me wrong. We've, we've all had favorable matchups. But uh, my feeling is I'm going to go over there. I'm going to get in his face. And, you know, we know the guy likes to win, but does he like to fight? We're about to find out. So I'm going to put him in a fist fight. And where have you been training for this camp? And uh, who are some of your main training partners? I've been training at CSA up here in uh, Dublin, California. Uh, Coach Kieran Fitzgibbons, and uh, they got a great crew out here of kickboxers and female fighters. And I've got uh, I've got access to Darren Wayonyama, uh, pretty much four or five days a week. He's he's in my ear, uh, so that's been that's been huge. Uh, main training partners. I've been working with a kid comes down from Sacramento from Alpha Male, Benito Lopez. Oh, Long Benito's kid, great. The, yeah, so I've been getting a little work with him. We move around. At least twice a week, I get to work with him. He comes down. Uh, obviously, Adam Antolin, Dustin Ortiz has been one of my main guys. I mean, I grab him every single day, and we try and choke each other. So I've had uh, had some good grappling rounds with him. We got a kid named Alex Canders. He's a he's a tenth planet black belt, and uh, really really good. My size, so t- ties me up, tangles me up in, in tough spots, and. Uh, yeah, we got a great crew out here. You know, there's guys that I haven't mentioned that uh, deserve it, but I, I'm telling you, we got a, a wonderful little group here, and it's uh, kind of a little bit of a smaller group, so I feel that I get more uh, one-on-one attention, and yeah, everything's great. It's awesome. What did you think of uh, Colby Covington winning uh, his title this past weekend at uh, UFC 225? Oh man, I love it. I- I'm happy for the guy. I really am. Uh, he. He's something else. He's hilarious. I, I can't put my finger on it. It's it's just strange knowing that he's he really is. He's he's a sweet guy. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but uh, he's he's a sweet guy. And I, I root for him. I know he he says crazy stuff and I, I know a lot of people get upset about it and you know, maybe some of the things he says, uh, I, I wouldn't say, maybe, but the dude's out here fighting for a world title and uh, yeah, he's doing his thing. I'm happy for him. How do you see this fight playing out on June twenty third? Who, I I think we're gonna fight 15 minutes. I think it's gonna be a, a test of uh, who who can put it together and who can make the adjustments. The kid's technical and he's good, um, and I I know that he's gonna be game and he's gonna be ready to fight. I think he makes mistakes and you know against lesser opponents he's been able to jump uh, submissions and end up in really good spots. But listen, you don't want to jump a submission and end up on the bottom of me for four minutes and 35 seconds, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to add up some punishment in that time. So, uh, I, I think I can, I think I can, uh, he's going to make mistakes. I'm going to end up on top and I'll probably batter him three, five minute rounds. Kid's tough. Don't get me wrong. And I think he's very capable and he'll have me in trouble. I know there will be positions and times where I have to fight out of tough spots, but I, I'm ready and I'm, uh, I'm in shape and, you know, I don't know exactly how it's going to play out. But I know a few things. I hit hard. Uh, I, I try hard, and you know, 
I, I usually come up on top of these things, so I like my chances. You got a long plane ride. We talked about that off the top. Uh, what are you going to be doing on the airplane aside from sleeping? Are you going to be loading up the, the movies? Are you going to be loading up the podcast? What would I find you doing? Uh, yeah, I'll probably check out. I'll, I'll listen to some podcasts. I just bought myself some new headphones, some affordable ones, of course. Um, my wife's listening. But, uh, yeah, I, I anticipate pro- probably a lot of music. You know, I'll, I'll to, to a lot of music. I like to get into the music mode when, when it's fight week. So I'll have my little speaker around with me. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be listening to music, maybe some podcasts, uh, maybe some movies, but try, uh, main thing is trying, trying to get on the schedule, you know, trying to make the adjustment on the plane ride. I don't, I don't, I haven't actually looked into that. That's kind of my own thought. Uh, it, it may not be the thing to do, but it's kind of what I'm thinking right now. And I, I just figure out, just get on the plane, act as if it's whatever time in Singapore and, when it's time, you know, when it's 10 o'clock at night, go to sleep at that time. Hopefully, uh, we, we adjust off of that. So, It's uh, UFC Fight Night 132 coming up here June 23rd. Uh, Matt, it was uh, great getting a chance to catch up with you, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, you can find me at Danger underscore Caged on Instagram and Twitter. I've got a Facebook page, uh, Matt Danger Schnell. Uh yeah, I, I, I don't really have uh, sponsors to thank, but I have a lot of friends, family, training partners, a lot of people out there who support me and love me. And, uh, you know, just like always, I've, I've done what I've needed to do on my end, and it's just time to go and do it. And everybody tune in or, you know, I know most people are going to wake up uh, on Sunday morning and, and check what happens. So that's okay. Y'all do your thing and uh, excited. Love everybody. Let's go. Let's go do this. What's up, Fight Fans? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to see even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters. We've also got coverage at events, including post-fight press conferences and media scrums. And if you like this video, check out the video to my right. It's worth your time.